And his wasn't the only Canadian voice. Torontonians Hart Pomerantz and Lorne Michaels wrote for Rowan and Martin, but for them, the experience was less than enjoyable. We would grind out jokes all day long in the heat and then bring them to the studio and the, the, they'd have their rehearsals and, and have all the fun. And we'd go home and, with, with migraines. There were so many things that I liked. I liked music, I liked comedy, I liked politics, there was, you know, I liked film, and that I would be a certain kind of comedy writer, joke comedy writer, didn't really fit with me. And now, in 1970, Hart and Lorne left laughing. They landed a deal to produce, write, and star in their own series of hip original specials for CBC. I was not happy working in Los Angeles. Hart was less happy than I was. I wanted to be a performer, not a writer. And the future in Hollywood would, would not have been in the performing field. And because we just done laughing, I think we were influenced by, well, we should do that kind of show, you know, and I think that was the expectation. Oh, what happened to your arm? I, I broke it playing hockey. You did? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So. There's a funny story that goes along with it. Oh, I uh, bet you uh, there is, yeah. anecdote, yeah. Well, maybe we could uh, talk about that next show. Uh, we next became show. a uh, sort of Carl Reiner, Mel Brooks kind of comedy team. Professor Morris, just how serious is pollution in Canadian cities? Very serious. <laughs> Hart was a much more gifted performer than I was. It just means you're on, on, and this means two minutes. Two minutes. Okay. What? And braver than I was. <laughs> I was described as the tall, good-looking one, which I also cherished. How are you, B? Oh, pretty chipper, pretty you're chipper. Looking. Their breakout character was also one that could only exist here at home, the disgruntled Canadian beaver. You mentioned the American Eagle. Oh, the American Eagle, yeah. Yes. Mm. How, how, how would you... Uh, I don't particularly care for the American Eagle. You don't like him either, eh? Well, not really. Uh, mm. How would you describe him? In one word? Yes. Imperialistic. Really? The beaver became the prototypic sort of bitchy Canadian who isn't recognized for his greatness because America was always too large. And now it's time once again to talk to our old friend, the Canadian Beaver. How are you feeling, Beef? Oh, pretty chipper, pretty chipper. Oh. It was our most popular character. We used to get thousands of fan letters. Uh, I, I had no point to make whatsoever other than to try to get laughs. Uh, my interest was in laughs. It turned out to be satiric by, by accident. Now, I understand a close friend of yours paid you a visit oh, yeah? recently. Mm -hmm. you know it's not a I friend mean. of mine. Well. The American Eagle? The American oh, yeah. Eagle. He flew up in his Lear jet. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, what was he here for? Oh, he was here for another get-rich-quick scheme of his. Well, He's always coming up saying, I'll make you rich, Beave. I'll make you rich. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, how was he going to make you rich oh, this time? this time it was a franchise operation. Restaurants all across the country, United States and Canada. Selling what? Beaver burgers. <laughs> the beaver was uh, a national symbol who was petty, um, you know, uh, vain and, and very fiercely competitive. Oh, you know who's on the quarter? Who's on the, the quarter? The elk is on the quarter. The elk is on the oh, quarter. the elk is not Canadian. The elk is not Canadian? No, he is an American buffalo. The, the elk oh, is oh. an American buffalo? Yes, I know that he's subverting the whole thing. <laughs> he, he is. He snuck across the border with his yes. big hairy legs, Have you... jumped on the corner, and they couldn't get him off. They said, all right, we'll use him. <laughs> You're no. sure that the elk is American? This is a, quite a serious no, charge I, know. I can tell, by the way, he says coffee. No. Co really? The future of the Canadian puck industry is now being seriously threatened. The reason? Dutch puck disease. The mockumentary Dutch puck disease became Lorne's calling card, an example of the high concept humor he was interested in producing. I don't know how they come to get the disease in here. It came over on a Dutch hockey team when they played in Welland last year and uh, it's affected the whole crop. Oh dear, that's terrible. If I never see another puck again, I'll be very happy. The last few decades, Canada has become the international leader in the production of hockey pucks. 1970 was a bumper year in puck country. Nearly 600,000 bushels were harvested in the southern Ontario puck belt alone. Puck pests, or puck to cockeye, were accidentally carried over on the sticks of a touring Dutch hockey team. While playing an exhibition game in Welland, the puck to cockeye broke loose and infected the nearby crop with the dreaded Dutch puck disease. The devastation was immediate. Have you heard the news about Dutch puck disease? Yeah, terrible. Bad. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think it'll affect you personally? Uh, well, without pucks, I'll probably score a lot less goals. Gosh, without pucks, I'm just another guy that skates backwards. Without pucks, what'll I drop at face-offs? Bill, this is quite a big day for you, is it not? Big day, Lorne. More like a red-letter day. 
first time in the history of this great nation we have TV cameras in the House of Commons to televise the debates. Well, there are those who said it couldn't be done, but everything seems to be going pretty smoothly, is it not? So far, Lorne, yes, but, you know, we are anticipating some of the members will resort to some cheap showbiz tricks to get to their constituents back home, but you can be sure that I won't be one, two, three, four of them. Yes, well, I, I noticed that the, the public galleries are, are packed today. There seems to be a great deal of excitement about what's going on here. A lot of friends and relatives up there. Now, uh, take my wife, please. She's a, y yes, I, I think I saw her earlier. Ten Hart and Lorne terrific hours were produced over three years, but it was never the breakout hit they had wanted. Eventually, creative differences caused Hart and Lorne to part ways. By the way, if you could get me on the corner, I would appreciate it. I'll do my best. Oh, Thank you very you much. You never really appreciate it in your own country. That's certainly oh. correct. Thank you very much. So Lorne went back to Los Angeles, more experienced and more determined to make his mark.